In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship and communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear sisters and brothers, for a moment let us become aware of the presence of God among us. Let us submit all our cares, worries, and anxieties at his feet. deepening our faith. Let us prepare ourselves to celebrate this Holy Eucharist by calling to our minds our sinfulness, our shortcomings and failures, and asking the Lord pardon and mercy. I confess to Almighty God and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, our Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Lord have, Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty and merciful God, that we may in truth receive a share in the resurrection of Christ, your Son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, the crowd of Philippians joined in attacking Paul and Silas, and the magistrates tore the garments of them and gave orders to beat them with the rods. And when they had inflicted many blows upon them, they threw them into prison, ordering the jailer to keep them safely. Having received this order, he put them into the inner prison and fastened their feet in the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's bones were unfastened. When the jailer woke and saw that the prison doors were open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself, supposing that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul cried with a loud voice, Do not harm yourself, for we are all here. And the jailer called for lights and rushed in, and trembling with fear, he fell down before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. And they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. And he took them the same hour of the night and washed their wounds. And he was baptized at once, he and all his family. Then he brought them up into his house and set food before them. And he rejoiced along with his entire household that he had believed in God. <clears throat> the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Some our response. 
With your right hand you save me O Lord With your right hand you save me O Lord I thank you Lord with all my heart you have heard the words of my mouth in the presence of the angels I praise you I bow down toward your holy temple With your right hand you save me O Lord I give thanks to your name for your merciful love and your faithfulness You have exalted your name over all on the day I called you answered me you increased the strength of my soul With your right hand you save me O Lord With your right hand you save me the Lord will accomplish this for me O Lord your merciful love is eternal discard not the work of your hands With your right hand you save me O Lord Gospel acclamation I will send the helper of truth to you says the Lord he will guide you into all the truth with you and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to saint john glory to you o lord at that time jesus said to his disciples now i am going to him who sent me and none of you asks me where are you going but because i have said these things to you sorrow has filled your heart Nevertheless I tell you the truth it is to your advantage that I go away for if I do not go away the helper will not come to you but if I go I will send him to you and when he comes he will convict you convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment concerning sin because they do not believe in me concerning righteousness because i go to the father and you will see me no longer concerning judgment because the ruler of this world is judged the gospel of the lord praise you lord jesus christ my dear sisters and brothers next Sunday we will be celebrating the feast of the ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ into heaven. And in today's gospel Jesus tells his disciples, "Unless I go, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you." And when he comes, he will teach the world about sin about righteousness and about judgment so the work of the holy spirit is to teach us about sin righteousness and judgment eight days after jesus was ascended into heaven the holy spirit descended upon the apostles on the pentecost day the holy spirit teaches the world teaches us about sin what is sin very often we have wrong or very subjective idea about sin we think of sin as some wrong we have done in a moment of weakness but is it really sin all about 
Jesus says, when the Holy Spirit comes, he will teach the world how it was wrong in rejecting me. So rejecting Jesus or failure to accept Jesus is the ultimate sin. Sin is an attitude that consistently prevents us from accepting Jesus as our personal Lord and Savior and accepting the values that he taught us, especially the values of justice, mercy and love. And that is why St. Augustine would say, sin arises when the things that are of minor good are pursued as though they were the most important goals of life. Sin arises because we pursue things that are of minor good as though they were the most important goals in life. When we seek money, power and affection in an obsessive way, sin arises because pursuit of minor goals prevent us from what is the highest good and the finest goal of our life. The Holy Spirit also teaches us that Christ is ever present among us. Jesus rose from the dead and went to his Father. He ascended into heaven and went to his Father and, be, and seated at the right hand of the Father. It is true that physically he is no more present among us. But that does not mean that he is not approachable to us. That does not mean that he is not present to us. The Holy Spirit makes it possible for us to experience him. Jesus continues to be present among us. In fact, he is more present to us than when he walked on the dusty roads of Palestine. Today he is present to us. He guides us. He lives among us. He nourishes us under the form of the bread and wine in the sacrament of the Holy Eucharist. Let's thank God for this gift. Let's thank the Holy Spirit for making it possible for us to experience him in our life. Today let us deepen our faith and allow the Holy Spirit to be ever present in our life so that we be far away from sin, sin of rejecting Jesus and be and lead a holy life. And may God bless all of us. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become our bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the wine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, please receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with a humble and contrite heart. Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from my sins. Pray, brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be pleasing and acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice in your hands for the grace and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these Paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them unto the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time above all to load you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. By the oblation of his body, he brought the sacrifices of old to fulfillment in the reality of the cross and by commending himself to you for our salvation, showed himself the priest, the altar and the lamp of sacrifice. Therefore overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people excels in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with the Francis, our Pope, Oswald, our Bishop, all the bishops and clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by the divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. We live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us share among ourselves God's gift of peace. The Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. May the receiving of your body and blood, Lord Jesus Christ, not bring me to judgment and condemnation, but to your loving mercy be for me, protection, mind and body, and the healing remedy. Behold Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are invited to share in this banquet of love. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. O Lord Jesus, since I cannot now receive you in your sacramental presence, I beg you to come spiritually into my soul to enrich me with your holy grace and make me truly your own forever. O Jesus, living in Mary, come and live in me, in the spirit of your holiness, in the fullness of your power, in the communion of your mysteries, in the perfection of your ways. O divine guest, give to my soul a strong, lively faith and unbounded trust, perfect humility, an abiding sorrow for my sins, a total abandonment to your divine will, and a perfect loving union with you in mind and heart. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Lord Jesus, thank you for the blessings and graces you have given me through this spiritual communion. Amen. Let us pray. Hear, O Lord, our prayers that this most holy exchange by which you have redeemed us may bring your help in this present life and ensure for us eternal gladness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go in the peace and love of Christ. Thanks be to God. Lighten by the we yeah. have Eternal 